the senator from Missouri. Senator Claire McCaskill, thanks for joining us, ma'am. Absolutely, McGraw. I'm sorry I screwed up my time. No I problem. No problem. Sometimes when I'm in D.C. Certainly understandable. How's, how's the health? It's good. I feel great. I mean, I have to take medicine for a decade that has some kind of yucky side effects, but I sure like that over the alternative. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Good to hear it. Now, you, <laughs> you made some national news, and a lot of people were cheering you on when you took over the cable company. You were talking about how it was going to cost you $10 to get rid of a $7 charge. But there's a bigger story, and that is I hear so many people who have to buy 600 channels to get Fox Sports Midwest to watch the Cardinals. That doesn't seem very fair to the customer. It isn't, and that's the next hearing. Uh, the first hearing that we've done, we've been investigating the pay TV industry for months now. We've hit, you know, interviewed dozens of witnesses, have thousands of documents. The next stop is their programming and the contracts for programming. And how much is everyone paying for channels that they don't watch? And why is that the business model that's being forced down our throat? So that's next up. But we sure discovered a lot of really horrible practices they have that make it really hard for you to deal um, with pay TV companies and really hard to figure out what you're paying and why. You, you brought this with uh, Senator Johnson, who was on the other side of the aisle. Is there, dare I say, bipartisan support over wanting some type of change? Well, I, I, we had um, one report that both uh, the chairman and I signed. Uh, the larger report that I issued, the minority declined to sign it. I'm not really sure why. I mean, I will tell you that uh, I have felt a great deal of pressure. The lobbying of the pay TV industry on Capitol Hill is enormous, and it's even more ginormous now because AT&T has bought DirecTV. So not only do you have the Comcast people who are NBC Universal and, and ESPN and Disney, you also have AT&T, and then on top of that, DirecTV. So you've got a lot of folks running around in Washington trying to soften the blow of some of the discoveries we're making as we look into this industry. But I'm kind of determined on this because I know this isn't as important as defeating ISIS. I know this is not as important as people being able to afford prescription drugs. But I have an awful lot of constituents that are tired of being treated this way and want to have better options. And so I'm going to keep you know, seeing what I can do to, to clean up some of the business practices that are so abusive in the, this industry. The other thing is Major League Baseball. So I pay $119 to buy the MLB package, and I can watch every single game except the St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah. And, by the way, when you get, you know, now that we're all cheering for the Kansas City Chiefs in football, um, you've got the same problem with football in that that's even more egregious because, you know, the only place you can get the NFL ticket is through DirecTV. Right. So, um, it, you know, the consumer has not been put at the top of this. Um, I will say they're feeling more pressure because so many people are cutting the cord. Mm. So many people are trying to go to an all-stream basis. The problem with that, McGraw, is it's really hard to do that if you want to watch real-time sports. So they know they've got everybody who wants to watch sports, which is just about everybody in St. Louis that want to watch the Cardinals and the Blues. Right. Sports and so news it, and or news. They use that uh, to kind of force you uh, to pay for a lot of stuff. And eventually, I think this business model is going to fall apart. Um, but in the meantime, um, I think it's important we keep putting pressure on them on behalf of the folks that feel like they're being abused. Senator McCaskill, make some news here. Make some national news. What are your thoughts as you watch the presumptive Republican nominee, Donald Trump? You know, I, I, it, I'm wondering how many people are, that are voting for him that are kind of embarrassed. Um, you know, I, I have so many friends that are, I feel for him. My, a lot of my Republican friends are just saying, we can't let this guy be commander-in-chief. He has no idea what he's talking about. Um, I mean, it's one thing to be really candid and, and upfront and clear, but this is a guy who changes his mind like he changes his shirt on matters of great consequence to this country, and I don't think he even wants to grasp some of the complexities that he would be forced to to deal with as President of the United States. So I just think it's a really dangerous thing that people are thinking about voting for this guy. I, I realize all the candidates aren't perfect, but they never are. Uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, this is, this is a buffoon. 
What does it say about, though, the Democratic candidate that they can't wrap their heads around voting for her? Here's, here's the worst guy in the world, they'll say. He's dangerous. He shouldn't be commander-in-chief, but I can't vote for her. I get that. I mean, part of that is that she, um, by virtue of who she is and, and her many decades of public service, I mean, the scars she wears, she got in public service. She didn't do like Donald Trump, run out and try to put her name on a bunch of buildings. I mean, even the foundation stuff that everybody yells about, I mean, I keep reminding everyone that was a foundation that used the money for good. That wasn't money that went into their pockets. That was money that went around the world to uh, deal with HIV AIDS and help women begin businesses in, in countries where they were being oppressed. So, um, but she represents the status quo, McGraw, because of her name and the fact she's been in the public eye so long. And so many people in America want to blow up the status quo, a little bit like Great Britain. I just think people need to realize that the way our Constitution is designed, um, sometimes when governments are split, it is hard to make progress. It doesn't mean everybody's not trying. And it doesn't mean there's a simpler answer, at least if we're going to keep our Constitution in place. Senator Clamor Castle with us for another moment or two. Let's see if we can cause more trouble for you. Have you seen the, <laughs> let's see, have you seen the Eric Greitens commercial where he's blowing things up that started airing moments after the Orlando shooting? Do you think that was in bad taste? Yeah, I can't figure out what this guy is running for. And it feels like to me he's running to try to get a date with somebody or something. Because, you know, he, he posts these videos of him after his workout, and, you know, he posts, you know, these vi this, this ad of him blowing things up and keeps it up after Orlando. And the latest thing he's done is put this, he's got this pamphlet that's a hunting license, no bag, no limit on ISIS. Somebody needs to let him know that the governor of Missouri does not have any role in the United States military. <laughs> that there will be no foreign policy in Jefferson City. Um, and I, you know, it's like he's running for I'm the biggest, baddest dude, um, as opposed to I'm somebody who can tackle uh, the roads and bridges in Missouri, which are in deplorable condition. We really need leadership on that. Education in Missouri, I think that's what people, I don't think they want Jefferson City to be talking about birthday cakes and bathrooms, and I don't think they want the governor's race to be a contest for who can have the biggest gun and blow up the most stuff. And um, I, I just think it's fascinating because it seems maybe I'm the one out of touch here. It's certainly possible. But the people I talk to are kind of going, hey, why can't we get back to the basics in Jefferson City? Uh, you know, you just gave uh, Senator or uh, Eric Greitens a big next campaign uh, slogan saying that you're against him. That's actually good for him. <laughs> that's the well, Todd Aiken that's effect. That's thing he's a little confused on, because I recall him being at the Democratic National Convention in 2008, and I recall him being fairly supportive of everyone who was on the stage that year. So this might be a case like Donald Trump. He says what he needs to at any moment to try to get elected, because I'm not sure that... Um, I'm not sure he was really convinced uh, what party he belongs in. Senator McCaskill, I know you were late, but you brought it anyway. Thank you very much for your so time. I am so sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Have, everybody have a happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. Senator Claire McCaskill with us here on the Big 550 KTRS. <laughs>